All right. It looks like we're live here. Well, uh, good morning, everyone, or good evening, uh, as the case may be, depending on where you are in this wonderful world. Um, today, I've got uh, Chad Barford from ThorChain here today. But uh, before we get to the meat of the conversation, I'd just like to take a second to say thank you to Omniflix Media and Citizen Cosmos, our sponsors, who are helping me produce this show. Um, both are amazing Cosmos projects. Omniflix Media makes a... Um, media management platform on top of a Cosmos SDK based chain. You can go ahead and check it out over their website. And the Citizen Cosmos team produces a bunch of great content, including uh, my favorite Cosmos podcast. And they also work on um, Cyberchain, which is a decentralized Google competitor. So uh, fuck Google and uh, welcome. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, Chad, thank you very much for joining me today to talk uh, ThorChain. Do you want to tell Thanks, me a little bit, tell tell me and the audience a little bit about your background and, and what got you into the space? Uh, yeah, I mean, I got into um, I, I got into coding in like 2008, I think, 2009, uh, after I saw the Iron Man movie and decided to, to build a Jarvis. <laughs> so I taught myself to code. I spent a year building a, a Jarvis, which was like pretty cool, fun project. Uh, and then after that, I was like, oh, this stuff's awesome. So I just started building more and more things and got the startup scene in, in Boston, which is where I'm from originally. Um, and then I've, I kind of stumbled my way into crypto in 2017 when I met some guys while I was traveling abroad who uh, told me about Ethereum and Bitcoin and like all of this, this, you know, newfangled blockchain technology. So I was just like, oh, this is really cool. So like I want to learn how blockchains work. So I built a blockchain from scratch, just as an academic sandbox, just to kind of like get a sense of like, how does it actually work underneath the hood? Because if you want to understand how something works, building it from scratch will pretty much force you to learn how it works. <laughs> totally. What what was the, was it a proof of work chain? Uh, yeah, it started off as a, as a proof of work chain. I actually wanted to build in a few different consensus models, just, be, just to experiment mm -hmm. with different ideas. Like it, it was like, a, it was intended to be like a slack, right? It's actually on my GitHub still. It's crappy code. Oh, cool. Just kind of like, just kind of vomited out some terrible code just to kind of play around and mess, with, yeah. mess about. But it's like, a, I call it, um, I think I call it like, I don't know, like black slack or something like that, block slack. I don't know. I can't remember what I call block it, slack. but it was like. We're going to have to check that out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's embarrassing code. They don't even read it. But like, it was just like an a, a academic sandbox to mess about. Uh, so I started off with like a proof of work uh, idea and then I like, moved to proof of authority as like each, indiv each individual conversation was gonna turn into its own blockchain. Never intended to be used by anybody for any reason outside of just development purposes. Yeah, but totally. It was just a fun thing just to kind of muck about, just like, how will this work if I did this this way or that way or this consensus model versus that consensus model and just kind of play around with it. You know yeah totally and I, I think i met you th the next summer at interchain conversations uh in, in berlin yep. and was that where you got hooked up with the thorchain folks yeah it's funny cause at the time yeah i so said they did the hackathon in berlin in i think it was like july i think 2019 or june yep. like that. or yeah 2019 20, 2019 yeah, right. and yep. at the time I, um i was actually uh, going to interview for some other job at another blockchain company. Uh, but then one of the uh, uh, original individuals of ThorChain, uh, it was an advisor to that other project. They're like, hey, just meet me in Berlin for this hackathon and for this Cosmos hackathon and, you know, in, in Germany, which I was happened to be living in Berlin at the time, just like pure coincidence. Um, and then uh, I had no idea what Cosmos was at that time. <laughs> And so I had the day before the hackathon, just like read through the documentation <laughs> just to kind of get spun up relatively quickly. And so then him and I just started hacking about, um, he was working the front end code. I worked in the blockchain code. We built like what was the very first lines of code of what ThorChain is today. Nice. Um, so, you know, there was a white paper. There's been a lot of planning for a long time and you guys are pretty close to delivering on that. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a long road. It's been about a year and a half almost or whatever it's been. Um, it's 80 weeks or something like that. I know this. that feeling. It's like uh, it's like dog years. <laughs> yeah, it feels a lot longer than it actually is. Uh, I mean, I was, when I was working, I mean, I was literally working 9 a.m. to midnight, seven days a week for like at least a year, right? Yeah. Like no days off, none of that stuff. Just pushing, 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 pushing. 
Um, but yeah, it's been a long time coming. We launched our chaos net uh, five months ago just to prove the concept, prove the math, prove the economics with real money, real, real, real economic, you know, value. Uh, which went really well. I mean, we right now it's got over 200 and something million dollars in total value lock right now. Um, and, and now we're kind of delivering on the original promise, which was like layer one cross-chain swaps, right? Bitcoin to Ethereum, Ethereum to Bitcoin Cash, like to Litecoin to whatever else. Uh, and so we'll be launching a uh, multi-chain uh, network probably in the next four to six weeks, uh, as was looking at this time, give or take. You know, don't uh, shoot me if it's shorter or less, more or less, but uh, we're delivering with five chains on, on the go, which is going to be uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and Binance. Uh, we're currently working on more like Dogecoin and Zcash and other ones that are kind of in the works. We have even external teams that are also contributing and, and adding uh, Polkadot and adding uh, uh Haven and Monero and other things as well. So hopefully the, the larger community will take over and start adding more and more chains to the network and adding more value. But we'll see how it goes. Nice. Uh, you know, that's really exciting. And once you have one Bitcoin fork, uh, you know, a lot of the machinery is just essentially the, the multi-sig over on Bitcoin. Um, yep. And then the ability to listen to the node and, and catch those events. So uh, pretty yep. easy to add more of them. Um, yep. That's really exciting. Um, you know, and as far as timelines go, I, I know I'm sure you've got people asking you when X, Y, and Z all the time. So <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that. Um, yeah, and, and you always feel bad when you have to delay because of some new thing came up or something like, you know, you know, this, this the engineering space it, is. I, oh, yeah, of course I know. You know, I've been telling people that IBC is going to ship since last June. So yeah. Um, <laughs> That's the problem, man. You, you never know the unknown unknowns, right? So, like, you, you, yeah. with everything that you're aware of, oh, we can launch this thing in X weeks or X months or whatever it might be. But then, like, as you get down the, the line, you realize, okay, we didn't account. Oh, this is the other thing we had. This other problem we hadn't considered or thought of, or, or, or some new bug or, or some. You never know. If somebody quits, you know, or something like this. Like anything can happen. Oh yeah. You know, and all totally. of a sudden your timeline gets shifted. Yeah, for me, it's always the the unexpected bug that you realize you just didn't write an entire piece of software for, and you're like, oh yeah. god, I gotta go back and do that now. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But I do want to circle back to one thing you just said, which is uh, about two hundred million dollars of total value locked on Thorchain. Yeah. A, yeah. very impressive, and congratulations. And B, if you look at the DeFi Pulse Index and compare Thorchain and I think uh, Luna and there's a few other Cosmos based chains that have a non-trivial amount of uh, total value locked. And those are starting to strike pretty high in that DeFi pulse index. And, and I think growing at a faster rate as well, which is yep. really, really exciting. Um, and when you're talking about cross-chain liquidity, ThorChain is going to be bringing liquidity to folks like Litecoin and BCH mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. have been completely unable and shut out of DeFi in, in yep able to access that. So yep, um, absolutely. that's a, you know, I think a really exciting part of the value proposition of ThorChain. And when we're talking about total value locked numbers, um, those are going to go way, way up. Um, yeah, one thing I mean, that right, I see, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, right. Like right now, the, the cap set that we have right now is it's only locked into Binance and it can only swap Binance BEP2 assets, right? Mm -hmm. But you, and that's like, you know, a lot of money in the system as it is. Totally. Uh, you figure you add Ethereum and Bitcoin and all these other things. Like right now, it's I think uh, Binance is like its total market cap is like if all all of its assets is around eight or nine billion dollars. But if you add those five chains I talked about before when we launch multi chain, it's going to be well over nine hundred billion dollars, close to a trillion dollars of total liquidity that's available to the Thorchain network. That is like more than a hundred x, right? So I think. I'm expecting uh, multi chain to have a lot more <laughs> total value lock by, by yeah, good margin. Totally. Well, one of the things that you know I, I think has been my experience in this sort of bridge building type stuff is it's really easy to build a bridge to nowhere, but having a compelling reason for users to move their funds over that bridge in this in the swapping services you guys offer are a compelling reason. There are markets yep. you can find on Thorchain that you're not going to find anywhere else. Um, then that bridge actually becomes hugely value additive. And sure. if you think about kind of traditional economics where trading between two previously closed economies 
tends to increase the value of both of those. Like this is the type of thing that we're going to see with Thorchain. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Binance thing, very interesting. Um, I had for I had forgotten that you guys already had Web two implemented. So um, with the Ethereum bridge coming, do you want to talk a little bit about your Ethereum bridge design? Um, we're going to go nerdy here for a minute because uh, <laughs> I'm also building an Ethereum bridge. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. So um, Ethereum is, is interesting because it's, it's very different in its the bridge to Ethereum very different in design than any other chain that we're currently connected to. Uh, it's fundamentally very different. Uh, Binance is a lot easier in the sense because you have instant finality. You don't have to worry about like reorgs or anything like this. Um, and every asset on Binance is effectively inter you interface in with it the identically the same, whether it's the BNB or BDCB or whatever other asset on, on Binance. Uh, that's part of the reason why we chose Binance first as our first kind of kick into it, just because it was a, a simpler bridge to, to create. We could, we could launch quicker and, and faster. But uh, once we got into the Ethereum world, it's much different because, you know, like ERC 20s are very different than like ETH itself. There's, you know, that's partially oh, yeah. why, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that like you can't even swap ETH on Uniswap because they wanted to use uh, only, yeah. uh, they had to use the, 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 yeah, WEF, the wrap token, right? And that's probably that reason because it's like that, that just adds more complexity. So, the way we do it is very different on Ethereum than we do with any other chain, um, and, and that we have a smart contract that is very, very simplistic. Um, it doesn't have it has almost it has very, very little logic. The actual number of lines of code is like I think it's like two hundred or something, very tiny. Yeah. Um, just to keep that code as simple as possible and have most of the logic stay on the Thorchain side, not on the Ethereum side. Uh, who's who's on the multi sig on that Ethereum contract? Is that a set of Thorchain validators? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it rolls. So, um, yeah. like, all that smart contract really does is it's like, you can kind of think of it like it's wallets within a wallet. Like, that's kind of the way you can think about it mm -hmm. in the sense that funds go into it and it gets associated with one of the, uh, the threshold signatures associated with the network itself. Um, and then that those funds can be moved by the network to, like, say, okay, this, this group of people have access to, like, you know, this hundred thousand dollars worth of assets, whatever it might be. And then this, uh, what we call a Yggdrasil vault, which is a, a one of one, of one of the validators, it gets access to, you know, typically it's like 25% of their, of their, um, of their bond, whatever that is. And so like it gets, it gets moved, the funds get moved around kind of within the smart contract. And then we just, it kind of like changes who, what, what validator has access to what, or what group of validators have access to what. Hmm. And, but it's so all done. Validators yeah, what do those validators do with those funds once they have access to them? Well, so so like you can kind of think of like there's two different types of vaults within the Thorchain. Mm -hmm. One is called Asgard, which is what we use for uh, threshold signatures, right? So you have uh, right now it's 36 nodes in Chaos Net, uh, and whether or not it'd be probably higher, maybe lower. We haven't decided quite yet for multi-chain. It, it's kind of put your finger to the wind kind of thing, but. Oh yeah, uh, totally know how that goes. Gotta, there's gotta pros guess. and cons to it increasing it, and there's pros and cons to decreasing the number. And so you kind of have to kind of get a, a sense of what you want to do. But anyways, uh, we have like you can think of Asgard as like the very secure but slow transactions because the more members in that party you have, the exponential time it takes to, to sign a single transaction. So for right yeah. now, it's about 15 seconds to do a single transaction with the current Asgards and, and Chaos Net. Um, the Yggdrasil is like a one of one. It's just like a regular old wallet, no multi sig, no multi anything. It's just they hold those funds, and so they bond with let's just say a million dollars, and the network grants them you know two hundred fifty thousand dollars of various assets. So yeah, you have access to these funds, so that when people want to do swaps, you're right there and you're really fast. So it's like it's less secure in terms of its funds, but it's very fast in terms of how fast it can pump out transactions per second, right? Um, but yeah. if anybody the, were to, those, to steal from it, those, go ahead. Yeah, those funds are associated with a bond, so you can slash for misbehavior there. Right. And so if any, if that node decides to get fancy and say, I'm going to go ahead and steal $100,000 of funds, their bond would be slash 1.5x, whatever it is that they steal. So at no point in any given time does anybody or even any group of individuals has access to more funds than what they have at risk. So you will never be in a situation where that's where that's the case, really. And so they're just there to be like just be fast little 
to pump out things because you can't run a network on 15 transactions or one transaction every 15 seconds. Like it's, it's, it's yeah. extraordinarily slow. It would be completely impractical and you know, it would fall over pretty much instantaneously by swapping yeah. from Bitcoin to Ethereum or whatever it might be. And so we have a separate kind of, so the, the big guy kind of like big Asgard kind of funds you just so and when they get low on funds, I can just pump a little bit more into it as a, as a way of like higher throughput. And so it can, it can handle a lot more transactions per second, much faster than, than, than even if you were to take every transaction on Bitcoin and Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin, you add them all up, like the total amount of trans trans transactions per second, the network can pump out that speed. So it, it can it can pump out like crazy fast if it needs to. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, Tendermint has nice performance characteristics. Also, it you were does, talking yeah. earlier about Binance Chain uh, being easy to integrate with. Uh, that's also another Tendermint uh, Cosmos Chain, which is uh, that is pretty cool. I wonder why it was so easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny. Um, that's a, a radically different design from the ETH bridge that I'm working on, and it leans more heavily on these economic incentives, which I think is really, really cool. And I'm looking forward to seeing this in operation. Um, the ETH bridge I'm building is uh, each validator within the Cosmos validator set has an associated uh, Ethereum key mm -hmm. and any events going to Ethereum or coming back the other way, they sign with the Ethereum key. Um, and that set of Ethereum keys within the Cosmos validator set makes up a multi-sig on the, uh, Ethereum contract that is the entry point into Peggy, or I guess we're calling it gravity now. Um, and that gets updated periodically as the validator set changes. Yep. Um, it is a bit of a slower bridge design for sure. Um, but it just has different trust properties. It, it leans a lot more heavily on the cryptography rather than the economic security, which, you know, these are the trade-offs and the types of system design that you see in these bridge technologies. And it, yeah. it's fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice. Well, uh, so that's V1. And you talked about a couple of the more exciting things coming up in terms of other bridges. What do you guys have planned for V2? Yeah. So, um, V1, we just wanted to satisfy uh, what the white paper originally was promising, which is layer one swaps. Um, V2, we want to really kind of pivot to help uh, the larger, the, the larger uh, Cosmos uh, ecosystem. And so I think we're going to be uh, offering synthetic assets that are pegged to Bitcoin or pegged to Ethereum or Litecoin or Ripple or whatever assets that are on the network at that given moment. There will always be a, a, an available synthetic asset that is always going to be pegged to that value. And so you can take your Bitcoin, swap it into synthetic Bitcoin, and then you're on the Cosmos ecosystem where you can now use IBC to send that synthetic Bitcoin to, you know, some derivatives exchange or, you know, Kava's CDPs or Terra's, you know, whatever. Like you can you can have access to that liquidity without needing to um, to uh, for other Cosmos chains to build a bridge to, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and all these things. They can just like take that our liquidity it's freely yep. available to you uh that's i think that's gonna be a really good con a contribution to the to general space um one of the things that we're talking about doing too is um is lending platform similar to uh ave or compound uh and because we're cross chain we already have a really good kind of incentive of why you'd use Thorchain over ave because you can take an actual bitcoin loan right or uh, or a bitcoin cash loan yep. if you really wanted to that's pretty big. I think that's pretty amazing, actually. I think, at least in my eyes. Uh, we're also thinking about how we can do uh, actual fixed rate lending. So you can take a loan out at you know twelve percent rate, whatever the rate might be at that moment, and you're just locked in at twelve percent for the, the the duration of that loan. It's not going to fluctuate up or down, and that kind of security or that kind of uh, you know um, not knowledge of what's going to happen in the future makes it just a better loan in many in many respects. Especially if you wanted to, if you want to take a really large loan, like you know, renting out, uh, mortgaging a house or something like this, or buying, getting money for for buying a house in Bitcoin or something like this, you could theoretically do that with a fixed loan. But you probably would not want to do that in a variable uh, loan that you would see on Compound. Yeah. Nice. Um, I, I do see one question over in the chat, and uh, you know, we do take questions at the end, so folks, please go ahead and add them. Um, somebody's asking, why not add Adam? And one of the things Chad has uh, not really explicitly said, but has implied a number of times is that Thorchain will be adopting IBC as soon as it's available. Um, and uh, Thorchain will be 
easily routable via IBC and all other IBC enabled chains. So if you're in the Cosmos ecosystem, if you're an investor in any of these projects, if you use any of these other chains, Kava, Cosmos, uh, Terra, um, you know, Akash, or there's like Sif chain, there's a ton of these other projects out there. All of those, all of this th stuff that Chad's talking about is gonna be available from your ecosystem pretty trivially. Sure. Pretty trivial. Yeah. So uh, we that's actually, a really exciting part. <laughs> we were actually uh, employing uh, some of them from the Cosmos community, one of the senior engineers there, to, to help build a Cosmos bridge to, to Thorchain so you could do add on. But yeah. then the whole IBC thing was like looking like it was solidifying and, and the, you know, you guys launched Stargate and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so we were like, oh, why don't we just do the, an IBC bridge rather than building a, a the way we're build, building like a Bitcoin bridge or a Bitcoin cash bridge. And so I think what's going to happen and hopefully in the future uh, is that we'll, we'll support IBC, you know, uh, coins that are being being via Atom uh, over IBC or any of those other assets that you can, they're available part of the network and you'll be able to stake that uh, or add a liquidity into the Thorchain pools to do that. That's really exciting. One last project part of Thorchain that I really personally like having worked in these decentralized ecosystems for a while. Um, Thorchain's funding a lot of teams outside of the core team. Thorchain's really smartly trying to use their treasury to build this platform. Talk a little bit about the way you view decentralization and how that's going to work moving forward. Yeah, no, um, this is something we've like from a core perspective, the team believes very strongly is that uh, we don't want to be the, the center of it all. Right? We don't want to be the controllers of it all. We don't. We, we don't want that at all. We just we're here to kind of kind of give birth to it in a sense, uh, but then push it out into the community for them to maintain and hold. So, we start off a very like uh, meager amount of uh, investment in the very beginning. I think it was like around a million dollars, which is nothing yep. compared to the crypto space where you yeah. have billion dollar things go up. Uh, but we took that. We grew it. I think it's last time I looked, it was around like a fourteen million dollar uh, treasury. Uh, which we give out monthly reports every month about how much money we have, where the money's going, all these things, uh, which is available on our blog if you want to check it out. But um, we made the determination to, instead of hiring more people into the the, the, the core team, if you want to call them that, uh, just to hire people externally, right, and, and pay them to do it uh, as separate entities. And so they'll take over those things entirely. Uh, for example, you know, there's a couple block explorers that exist that was uh, funded by Thorchain. Um, their Midgard, which is like our RESTful API on top of, of the blockchain, is now owned by Delphi Digital. Um, there's all sorts of external projects that are being uh, that are being done to help contribute UIs. Um, I mean, uh, wallets, like all these things are being created, and, and we're going to push out all those funds uh, to the greater community. And our intention actually as a team, we've been public about this, is to have a planned obsolescence in July, 2022. So the team was going to basically disband at that point and the rest of the funds will be divvied to uh, various teams externally. And some individual just take over uh, some of the funds. We'll just give the funds out to people to maintain Midgard and maintain the core protocol and maintain this and just kind of, and just divide up entirely. Um, we always want to make sure we're pushing the decentralization aspect to what this project is and, and make sure that we don't have any centralized figures or, or, or team members over the long term. You're starting to see some really exciting teams come into the ecosystem as well. I, I saw an announcement, I think it was yesterday or the day before, uh, with a team with a really impressive pedigree. Um, what was the name of that team? Do you remember? They were coming into the to the to the uh, Torchain. To the, uh, Torchain? Um, yeah. I mean, there's been a few, which one are you talking about? I'm not even sure which one I'm actually able to release publicly or not, so I don't want to say it. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a great question. It was, I have to dig through my Twitter here and I don't want to do that on the call. Um, but it, it was a, a couple of ex IDEO folks, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, anyway, in exciting, that is one of the aspects of the Thorchain project that is most exciting to me, you know, Cosmos has long been this super strong standard bearer of decentralization, but, you know, because of the way the project was funded, the ICF has a lot of those funds. And only now is the Cosmos community pool starting to flex its muscles, spend some money on marketing, figure out how to fund some of these things like the AMM and, you know, other projects that have taken our software and built on top of it have 
taken much more advantage of these decentralization, these features that enabled this type of decentralization. Um, and that's really exciting to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so before we wrap up here, any last items that you want to, you want to chat about Chad? Um, I mean, I think that we're all very excited about Thorchain's progress. I mean, the token's been performing very, very well, which is fantastic. It kind of shows the adoption, you know. Uh, it is all, all season the- today, in case it, in case anyone doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> in the check, check in the prices today, I think everything's, you know, green across the board, more or less, right? Is that, that's yeah. happening there. Um, one, of, one, of those, one of those kind of days. Yeah, man, that happens. You know, every day is going to see of blood in other days, you know. <laughs> Anybody who's been in the space long enough knows you just kind of yeah, shrug all that stuff off, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but we're all just excited. We've launched our test net, uh, which, is, uh, which is out there, um, proving that all the technology works uh, for cross-chain swaps and all this kind of stuff. And so we're really excited to be launching the multi-chain network in the coming weeks. Uh, and that's going to be, uh, in my, this is my opinion, it's going to be an inflection point of when people kind of realize the power and the flexibility and the significance the the hair on fire problem that thorchain is now solving for the greater crypto c- cryptocurrency community and so people are going to become awoken to this dex that is you can get from one chain to another which is going to be like huge right but it's going to be interesting to see what happens because that's that's probably going to push the prices of like of gas quite significantly i'm assuming right so like on thorchain no, no, on like Ethereum, on, on Bitcoin, yeah. right? Because all of a sudden you go from swapping your Bitcoin to some sort of off-chain thing like Coinbase or Binance, and now you're going to start swapping on layer one. And so that's going to cross more transactions on those chains, which is going to cause the gas price to go even higher, which mm. is going to be interesting to see how that kind of like happens, you know, how that kind of plays out. Yeah, that will be interesting. You know, this whole L2 narrative and which, you know, I I really don't like that distinction. I think in, you know, we were talking about this a little bit before we came on the air. Um, They're all just blockchains and each of them has a slightly different security property. And there's a lot of ways where you can build programmatic links between them. And IBC is only like the most formal of those ways. But, yep. it, you know, as we were talking about bridge designs earlier in this call, there's a lot of different ways to do these types of bridges. And yep. I think what we're increasingly seeing is a interconnected network of independent crypto economic systems that is becoming increasingly fluid and the yep. ability to move liquidity easily throughout that network, utilize it in various protocols throughout along the way and then bring it back home or move it out to a centralized exchange via something like USDC, which also gives users cross-chain capabilities. What we're starting to see is something that looks a lot more like the internet and a lot less like an L1, L2 kind of false dichotomy, I think. So um, that's definitely something I'm tracking during this bull market is how quickly that shift happens um, and how quickly I have to stop hearing people say L2, which is uh, not soon enough. I mean, you're right. I mean, it, it is a little bit of a misnomer in a sense, right? And, and yeah. it's, it's going to be interesting um, that we'll see kind of the, 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 the non-whales slowly get pushed out of layer one Ethereum and, and even layer one Bitcoin uh, over the coming months. And we'll have this kind of yep. war, so to speak, between all the L2 you know, solutions out there, so to speak. Uh, and and Thorchain is one of them and, and Cosmos is another one of them, you know, in one sense. And, you know, we'll see how, how it kind of manifests over time, but it's definitely going to be fascinating here. 2021 is going to be like, that's going to be Great. one of the things we wouldn't talk about a lot, you know. You know, Chad, I think that what Cosmos has an advantage in is a lot of these other L2s that are branding themselves as L2s are standalone chains. You know, Matic came out and just said that they want to be the Ethereum's internet of blockchains. But um, we've been building the internet of blockchains over here for quite a while. And what we're creating is a networked layer two network, if you want to think about it that way. Um, And that's a lot more powerful than any one individual chain. And I think- Oh, for sure. the The market is really starting to wake up to what we've been building. Oh, 100% agree. Like, like the future yes. of DeFi are going to be the, the chains or the apps that are chain agnostic or asset agnostic. To, to say that you're going to pick a horse, so to speak, whether it be Ethereum or something else, 
and just it's like silly. this is my horse is like there's nothing else. It's, it's a little bit silly to me that the apps that will actually succeed are the ones that have are agnostic. And those those apps will, and those chains that are agnostic like that, Thor chains agnostic, IPC is agnostic as well, uh, Cosmos is agnostic. Like because those chains will have access to a lot more funds, Bitcoin for example, and Ethereum by themselves is like you know close to a uh, hundred. Well, close to eight hundred billion dollars. That will have, that's where you can see all the liquidity, all the liquidity that's going to be happening on those chains. And there's little um, illiquid chains like you're going to see on Ethereum, relatively speaking, in the future. They'll have they'll still be there, they'll still exist, and they'll still do what they do. But in in, in the end, the, the thing that'll win with the other ones that are agnostic to chain, agnostic to asset. That's what's really important in the future. And I think yeah. Cosmos is actually a, a great example of that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's a great place to stop. Um, Chad, thank you very much for joining us this week. I really appreciate you coming to talk a little bit more about ThorChain. And uh, before we wrap here, I just want to say thank you to our sponsors, Omniflix Media and uh, the Citizen Cosmos folks. And uh, I will see you all next week. Um, guest still TBD, but uh, I think I'll find something, somebody fun to bring on. But uh, anyway, uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, see you guys soon. All right. Bye. Bye.